John with Smart Edition Academy, and in today's video, you're going to learn about what's different about the T7 test uh, compared to some of the older versions, and we're going to go over what the changes are and what you can expect to see on this test so that you can be fully prepared to crush the test. Now, before we get into it, I want to make sure that you check out the links in the description below. There is a ton of great free resources. There's a free T7 practice test, our free T7 boot camp that's totally free to join, our Facebook study group that's got over 12,000 members in it, all preparing to take the T's, all sharing the resources, what's working for them, what's not, and I want you guys to be a part of that. It's a great place. It's probably one of the most helpful things you can do. We also have links to our online course, our practice test pack, all that good stuff. So make sure you check out those links. Now, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. We have a ton of videos to help you out for the T's and new ones coming out every week. So make sure you subscribe. The T7 starts in the beginning of June 2022, and most schools will accept T6 scores for up to a year after the change, but it does vary. Some schools will only accept the T6 scores for three months, so you really need to check with your school and make sure uh, if you're trying to submit a T6 score, how long they will accept that for. There is a good chance that you may end up needing to take the T7 test. Now, what's different about the T7? Well, there's a perfect saying in Thailand that says something like it's same, same, but different. And what that really means is that it's similar, but they use that there all the time. It's same, same, but different. And that's exactly what it is. Now, for the same, same of same, same, but different, what we mean by that is that for the T7, all of the subjects and topics are exactly the same as the T6. Nothing has changed in that regard. Now, there are two changes, though, that make it different from same, same, but different. Uh, the actual test has a different ratio of topics per question than the previous version. So, for example, the T7 science section has less A&P questions and more chemistry and biology questions. It's slightly changed in each of these sections. The math is a little bit more evenly distributed than it was before. Now, some people might think that this would make it more difficult, this T7 version, but that really depends on you. Uh, a lot of people found A&P to be more difficult, and there's so much to know for A&P that this could be getting a break. It, you don't don't have as many a and questions or as much that you might need to know. But on the other hand, a lot of people find chemistry very difficult. They didn't really master it in high school if they took it at all. So it's a little bit daunting to have to take the chemistry section. So it just really depends on you if the test really isn't more difficult or easier. Now, the second difference is that the T's will no longer be only multiple choice questions. The T7 is introducing new question formats, which include select all that apply, supply the answer items or fill in the blank, an ordered response or sequencing, a drag and drop type question, and a hotspot question where you have to click on an image to answer the question. Now, we have another video where we go over in depth all these different question types and strategies and tips for how to answer them. We will link that right up here so you can check that video out. So let's go over in depth each section of the test and what you should be prepared to see. Now for the reading section, there's gonna be 39 questions in 53 minutes. And the takeaway here is that the topics are again, a little more evenly distributed than before. And the previous version was a lot heavier on key ideas and details, uh, but now that's more evenly split with integration of knowledge and ideas. And coming in with slightly less questions is craft and structure. So let's break that down a little bit and talk about what's in these uh, topics that I just mentioned. So for key ideas and details, you're going to have 15 questions. And under key ideas and details, these are topics like main ideas, topic sentences, supporting details, uh, summarizing text and text features. And then under the craft and structure category, you're going to have nine questions. And these include topics like tone, mood, and transition words, the author's purpose and point of view, evaluating and interpreting data, and then under the in integration of knowledge and ideas, 15 questions. And this is going to cover things like uh, recognizing facts and opinions and evaluating an argument, understanding primary resources, making inferences and drawing conclusions, uh, types of passages and text structures, uh, knowing genres and themes in passages. So those are questions that you'll see under that integration and knowledge of ideas. Now we do have other videos where we go much more in depth for all of these things and tell you exactly what you need to know for the test, what each of these topics uh, encompasses on an even deeper level. So check out those videos on our YouTube channel. Now for the math section, you're going to have 34 questions in 36 minutes, and this 
section, I think, is organized a lot better. It used to be mostly uh, numbers and algebra as a majority of the test, and now it's more like half and half with measurement and data uh, and numbers and algebra. So they really um, made that much more even. And so you'll see uh, 18 questions for numbers and algebra, and when we break that down, numbers and algebra is going to be things like addition and subtraction, multiplication and division, decimals and fractions, addition and subtraction of fractions, multiplication and division of fractions, ratios, percentages, proportions, uh, that's everything that's going to be under the numbers and algebra category. And then for the measurement and data category, you'll have 16 questions, uh, and that's going to be standards of measure, similarity, right triangles, trigonometry, uh, circles, and interpreting graphics. Now again, check out our videos where we really do a deep dive into this. Now for the science section, we're going to see 44 questions in 53 minutes, and this one's had a pretty big change, the biggest of, I think, all these subject sections of the test. And the reason is that it is roughly containing half of the AMP questions that it used to. On the old T6 version, there were 36 AMP questions. It was the majority of the test. Now we're only seeing 18. That's half. So with AMP, there's so much to know. You're still going to need to know it, and you know, you'll know you need to know exactly what to know within AMP, and we're going to do a video on that, so make sure you check it out so you can know what to really focus on for AMP. Uh, and then on the flip side, there is almost double the number of chemistry and biology questions uh, as there was before, and about the same scientific reasoning. Now for the AMP, I mentioned 18 questions, and that's going to go over every system within AMP. Uh, for biology, you'll see nine questions, and that's going to be things like foundations of biology, cellular structure, function, and type, cellular reproduction, cellular respiration, genetics, and DNA. And for the chemistry section, eight questions, and this is going to cover the kind of subtopics like states of matter, properties of matter, chemical bonds, chemical solutions, acids and bases, good chance you're going to see quite a few questions on acids and bases, so be prepared for that. Scientific reasoning, this will be nine questions, and it's going to cover the topics of scientific method and designing an experiment, and scientific tools and measurement. The English and language usage section is going to be 33 questions, uh, where it used to be 28 questions. And the key takeaways here are that the language and vocabulary section has more questions than it did before, but otherwise not a huge change in the other categories. So let's go ahead and break that down. So you'll see 12 questions on conventions of standard English, and these are well, the conventions of standard English. So it's spelling, capitalization, nouns, pronouns, adjectives, adverbs, conjunctions and prepositions, verbs and verb and, and tenses. And under the knowledge of language category, you'll have 11 questions, which will cover subject and verb agreement, types of sentences, types of clauses, formal and informal language. And lastly, the using language and vocabulary to express ideas in writing category is going to have 10 questions. And this is going to include topics like root words, prefixes, suffixes, a lot of questions that you'll probably see on the test for that topic, and context clues and multiple meaning words. Now the Smart Edition Academy TEAS online course is fully updated with all the new question types. Uh, a lot of this change in the actual practice test so that they reflect what the actual exam is going to be like for you now. And so you can check that out on our website, smarteditionacademy.com. The print study guide book is also available on Amazon. You can check it out there. And again, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. Lots of new videos coming out. And if you want to check out some other T7 videos, you'll see them right here. And until then, we'll see you guys in the next video.